I'm Congressman Steve King. On this National Day of Prayer, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you about the role of faith in my life and the role of faith in the life and history of this country. And we should remember that our founding fathers were Christians to a man. Uh, they believed in God and in the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They studied the Bible. Now they did study other religions, but it didn't mean they adhered to them. They wrote in the Declaration of Independence that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you look across the buildings in Washington, D.C., where I sit now, or across the country, you will see references to God time after time after time. If you go to the Supreme Court building, you will see up on the frieze, they call it, it's the trim on the inside of the Supreme Court chambers. You'll see Moses sitting there with the Ten Commandments. If you go to the east portico of the Supreme Court building, you'll see Moses sitting over the doors on the east portico with the tablets on his knees of the Ten Commandments. One cannot conclude that this country was founded without a strong faith in God. And furthermore, as you go throughout the buildings, there'll be references to God, phrases from the Bible that are inscribed in stone all across this city and across this country. And when you walk into the House chambers, the United States House of Representatives, you will see our national motto above the, the seat of the Speaker in the House of Representatives. It says, In God We Trust. We start every day with a prayer here in the United States Congress. Generally, we gavel in at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the first order of business is for the chaplain to offer the prayer. And so, since the beginning of this country, the core of our faith has been an essential component. If it were not for God, if it weren't for our faith in Jesus Christ, there would not be a United States of America. And yet, there's been an assault on our faith and on our religion. And there are those who would like to chisel the reference to God from every building that we have in this country and take faith out of the public square and prohibit us from expressing our faith here in the, in the public arenas in the United States. You have a right, as an American, to freedom of speech, religion, and the press. And you have a right to express your religion and your faith and pray in all places that you should choose. And here in this Congress, I want to tell you that in, in my life, and in the lives of many of the members, the support group and the involvement in prayer and faith, it goes on constantly, every day. There are vigils where we have people that are praying day and night for Congress to do the right thing for this great nation that's been so blessed by God, the United States of America. There's a congressional prayer breakfast every Thursday morning at 8 o'clock. There's a Bible study every Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock. There's a Tuesday afternoon Bible group. There's a prayer group that takes place during first votes of the week, during those votes, and members go in and out. When Obamacare was on the floor for getting close to a final vote, a group of us members, uh, 24 exactly, someone else got them, uh, went into the members' chapel. We have, a, we have a chapel that's set aside for congressmen and congresswomen and, and senators to use at their discretion. And it's a quiet place to pray and reflect and I often go in, uh, but during the beginnings of the vote on Obamacare, there were 24 members of Congress that are on their knees, around on the floor in the chapel, in a circle praying, taking turns praying, asking God to lift this burden from us and uh, to give us the opportunity to maintain the liberty that he so blessed us with. We lost that vote, but it strengthened us in ways we couldn't have imagined. And often, often we learn and understand that God has another plan for us. And we will pray for God to do something for us, to step in and intercede and make it easier for us. But sometimes he has a challenge. And that challenge is that we have to go through the test. And the tests that we go through strengthen our resolve that we're as useful in the next challenge. So when he tests us and challenges, remember, he's preparing us for the next test and the next challenge. And in many ways, our prayers can, can with God's will, change the world but they also change us inside so that we contribute in a way that he envisions to also change the world. So every day, we need to continue to ask God for his blessing on each of us and on this nation and give him great thanks for the blessings that he has provided to us. And every day I pray for a measure of his wisdom so that I can go forth and serve and glorify him in this job that he's given me the great privilege to do. So as you uh, remember today in this National Day of Prayer and as you pray, 
um, I want you to know that this is a nation that's greatly blessed, and at the core of America is our Christian faith, and we need to hold it together, and we need to grow it, and we need to glorify God in all that we do. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.